and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Canuck Podcast, the podcast done by fans for fans of everything nerdy. And I'm going to leave the intro at that because we got one fucking hell of a show to go through. <laughs> oh, surprise, you have no idea. And by the voices you could hear joining me this week, it's ECW James. Hola! And Israel Pacheco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we can get right into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a well a dozen news stories, and we have, of course, the games of March, which um, there's about near to 50 items on this list. So let's yeah. begin with March 3rd. We have Hell Divers for PS4, PS3, and PlayStation Vita. Resident Evil Revelations 2, Episode 2 for PS3, PS4. Ocaricia, <laughs> Tainted Bloodlines <laughs> for the Vita. Scream Ride for the Xbox One and 360. Ali Ali 2 for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. And Shiftlings for the PlayStation 4. Woo! Yep, kicking the month eh, off. None of those really interest me, but... Eh, Resident Evil... Revelations 2. I, I caught, I've been catching bits of the first episode. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting to see when they release it all. I can yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. put back eventually. Yeah, I'm with you there, too. All right, so next on the fourth, uh, we have Resident Evil Revelations 2, episode 2 again, this time for uh, the 1, the 360, and Windows. Then mm-hmm. on the fifth, we have Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Tripping Stars. Or tipping, sir, sorry, for the 3DS and <laughs> Wii U. <laughs> yeah, just tripping up in my words, that's all that is. Tripping worse, you could have said tripping balls. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> this donkey Kong tripping <laughs> balls. I'd buy that. Oh, man. I think what's interesting about that one is this is Nintendo's first cross-buy title. Yeah, and I, I forgot this came out so soon. Yeah. I knew this was coming out sometime in the spring, but... It just kind of dropped out of nowhere. Yeah, it just crept on up there. Alright, so next up on the 6th at sixth and 9th, we have Zombie Army Trilogy, releasing for the PS4, Xbox One, and Windows, and Shelter 2, releasing on Windows and Mac. Woo! Link Simulator! <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I know it's got a big fan following, but still, it's... It, it's, you're playing a kitty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, maybe there's a future Let's Play there. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the first one, like, Badgers or something? Yeah, the first one was Badgers. Okay. This one's going to be kitties. <laughs> <laughs> the internet will love it. Yep. <laughs> All right, really? Now for the tenth, the next big day. We have Assassin's Creed Rogue for Windows, Altair Shalali, Alchemist of the Dust Sea for PS3, City Skylines for Windows, Devil May Cry Definitive Edition for PS4 and Xbox One, Dreamfall Chapters Book 2 Rebels for Windows, Mushroom Men Truffle Trouble for Windows, Resident wow, Evil... Wow, I got a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Resident Evil Revelations 2, Episode 3 for PS3 and PS4. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters for PS3 and PlayStation Vita. Hotline Miami 2 for Windows, Mac, Linux, oh, yeah. PS4, PS3, and PlayStation Vita. And Flame Over for PlayStation Vita. Yeah, buddy. So, yeah. that's a big day. Yeah. Yeah. I just got to say, really, do we need another high-def collection of Devil May Cry games? <laughs> Yeah. I'll probably pick that one up. I missed that one the, the first time around. Okay. <laughs> on a 360 and PS3, even if I owned it on 360, but I just never got around to it. Didn't, didn't you miss, like, the free version on PlayStation Plus, too? I think I bought the, uh, I didn't buy it, but, you know, I downloaded it also. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I technically have the game, but I want to check this version out. Um, the other game for me is definitely uh, Hotline Miami 2. Mm. Yeah, definitely gonna pick that, that one up. I gotta be the big one up of uh, all the group there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that one's looking good. Definitely playing that on the Vita. Mm, same here. The first one works so well on the Vita. Yeah. Uh, well, other than that, for me, the only one there is uh, Alchemist of the Dust Sea. I do have that one pre-ordered, so. And I ask? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be NIS. Yep, that limited edition coming. Future unboxing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the one that has me excited is Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters. <laughs> I, I really wonder what that is, honestly. I hope there's a demo or something for it. <laughs> I guess I want to see what the hell it is. I can uh, guarantee it's going to be Japanese, it's going to be weird, and there's going to be some girl with a really skimpy top on. Um, I'll buy that. <laughs> well, you're pretty close. There's a girl on the cover wearing a schoolgirl's outfit, so... Oh, yeah, he was he was dead on. <laughs> Japan! <laughs> uh, there's the uh, Amazon link if you guys want to check it out. Oh, God. Let's see. <laughs> I, I, I gotta see this now. Oh, they're actually getting a physical release. That's surprising. I thought it was a digital title. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's going to be boots for plenty. Oh, it's by Axis. Huh. Yep. Surprising. Wow, it looks like a... Um, um, visual novel. Yeah, visual novel. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that actually looks better than what I thought. <laughs> it was going to be some <laughs> BS, like, third-party game. <laughs> and there's a guy, to, and there's Carmen San Diego. <laughs> Founder. <laughs> okay, moving to the eleventh, we have Ori and the Blind Forest for the Xbox One and Windows. Xbox One came close to having an exclusive this month, and Resident Evil Revelations <laughs> Two, Episode Three for the 360, Xbox One, and Windows. Ori. Ori and the Blind Forest is probably a definite there for me. Yeah, I don't have an Xbox One anymore, so <laughs> <laughs> that is something I'll, I'll definitely pass on. Now. <laughs> All right, moving on to the 13th, we have Codename Steam for the 3DS, where you can fight aliens in a steampunk setting using Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but come on, let's be real. Monster Hunter 4 is out now. now. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to buy it. <laughs> well, well, you know... All those people out there with a Martha Amiibo, because everybody's got one, can use it in this game. <laughs> Aren't they going to reissue the Marth pretty soon? I think That's so. what I heard or, or around the release of this game. But it's going to be a mess like all the other yeah. Amiibos have been. Mm. I'll be like, oh, this is a release date. And like one store has it one week, then another store has it two weeks later, and another one has it three weeks before. The... It's just so confusing. Yep. Hell, I just got my Mega Man Amiibo from Amazon there like yesterday. <laughs> that took long enough to get here. I think there's a demo up for it, if I'm not mistaken. There is. For uh, Codename Steam. So I'll probably check out the demo, <laughs> but that isn't something for me to pick up. Right away, maybe check out the demo and maybe wait. Hmm. It's interesting. It's perked my interest because I loved XCOM Enemy Unknown, and mm-hmm. it kind of has that same kind of vibe to it, that style of play. So, and I think it's cool too. That's a new IP, that's yeah. something fresh. So, yeah, something Nintendo hasn't done in a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's move on to the seventeenth. The next big day we have. Battlefield Hardline for Windows, PS3, PS4, or Xbox 360, and the Xbox One, a.k.a. probably an open beta. Blade Kitten, Episode 2 for <laughs> Windows. Bladestorm Nightmare for PS3, PS4, and Xbox One. Final Fantasy Type-0 HD for PS4 and Xbox One. Comes with a demo for Final Fantasy 15. Oce- Ocean Horn, Monster of Uncharted Seas for Windows. Resident Evil Revelations 2, Episode 4, for PS3 and PS4. The Awakened Fate Ultimatum, for PS3, go NIS. Wolfie, The Red Hood Diaries, for Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. And Jamestown Plus, for the PS4. And just to make note, the next day on the 18th, uh, Revelations 2, Episode 4, comes out for the 360, Xbox One, and Windows. Comes out for Microsoft. Yeah, basically. Yeah. God. 
So yeah, the seventeenth. Big day. Big day. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not picking up fucking hardline on launch. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to wait. Yeah. Hopefully they, they, they get things straightened out this time around. Especially since they, they delayed it. Yeah, they delayed it. They've actually uh, been bringing in professional YouTube players from around mm-hmm. the world to play it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they have a huge community. So, you know, they give a lot of honest feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does look fun from what I've seen. It looks a hell of a lot funner than anything they've been putting out so far. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I've, you know... Once bitten, twice shy. I've learned my lesson. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. most people are like kind of excited for the actual campaign in this one because it's being done by Visceral, the guys who gave us Dead Space. Yeah. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, they've been taking their time with this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll wait and see. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah. 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 Original. Yeah, wait for those reviews. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there was a story that came up to this last week saying that we might see necromorphs in the game somewhere. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. And that'll be, I guess, like their zombie mode. Yeah, I was thinking that. They could really do that. Yeah, I mean, if that'd be EA, funny. EA owns the franchise. Mm-hmm. That'd, be, that'd be funny. <laughs> All right, so on the 19th, we have Worlds of Magic Releasing for Windows. And we can move on, because I'm sure none of us know what that is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Alright, so on the 20th, we have basically Nintendo Day for the most part. We have Fossil Fighters Frontier for the 3DS, Mario Party 10 for the Wii U, and also the uh, Super Mario set of Amiibos are out that day, I'm assuming. Possibly. Maybe. Yeah, um, they are. (laughs) And Ride. For Windows, PS3, PS4, 360, and the Xbox One. I'm assuming that's a racer. I'm guessing. Same. <laughs> yep, so uh, Mario Party 10, biggest game there that day. Yeah, even if I've been buying like all the Nintendo first party stuff, I think I'm going to hold off on Mario Party. <laughs> I've never really gotten into the series, so mm. I could always pick it up later in the year if there's like a point in time when there isn't something coming out on a Nintendo system. Mm. I'm curious yeah. if they have online mode in that, because I, I don't think they do. Ah, well, useless <laughs> they to me then. Freaking, yeah, they don't. It, yeah. <laughs> I guess even if it did, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. one thing with the Mario Party series is it's actually caused more arguments between friends than anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to the 24th. We have Borderlands, the Handsome Collection for PS4 and Xbox One, Bloodborne for PS4. Uh, Well, it's on the list here, but it recently got delayed, so I'll skip over that next one. We -hmm. have Grand Theft Pizza Delivery for Windows, Lego Ninjago Shadow of Ronin for 3DS and the Vita, and Metal Slug 3, releasing for PS4, PS3, and the Vita. Bloodborne. That's yeah, all. Bloodborne. All about the Bloodborne. Yep. And really, Metal Slug 3? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aren't they, like, actual series one? Aren't they, like, up to episode 10 now? Yeah, yeah I, I guess this is, like, a re-release on PSN, right? Yeah. That's what it looks like, but... Yeah. It might have oh, well. <laughs> if it has trophies, that's all that matters. Yeah. This guy. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the 26th and the 30th. We have Pillars of Eternity on the 26th, releasing for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And on the 30th, Dead or Alive 5, Last Round, gets its release on Windows. Modders rejoice. Yeah, Booby Simulator 2015 is now out. You're damn right it gets its release. (laughs) (laughs) One might say it's a happy ending. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, fuck. I'm horrible. (laughs) (laughs) But we're not done yet. Nope, because on the 34th, 
31st. 31st. He's <laughs> making up new days. <laughs> On the 31st, we have MLB 15, the show, releasing for PS4, PlayStation 3, and the Vita. Story of Seasons, releases for the 3DS. Tukiden Kawami, releases for the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. I was about to say Kawaii there. And Axiom Verge gets its release on PlayStation 4 with a Vita release in the near future. Yeah, Axiom Verge looks pretty cool. Mm. Got that sweet, sweet Metroid vibe to it. I just don't know if I'm going to pick it up right away. Maybe I'll wait on it a little bit, but um, it definitely has my attention. Mm. Same here. And it's been, it was done by one guy who did everything. Yeah, he did everything. The soundtrack, the gameplay, the, the artwork. It's crazy. Hell, I'll just buy it for that. <laughs> just because it was one guy who did it. It all depends how much it is. It's probably, what, like 10, 15 bucks? 20 bucks. 20 10, bucks? 10% off the first two weeks, I think. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not bad, yeah. And to be announced, we have our Mellow for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Ali Ali gets its Ali Ali One that is gets its Xbox One, Wii U, and 3DS releases, and Oddworld New and Tasty at some point comes to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox One. Wow, an Oddworld game. Mm-hmm. What's the last time we had an Oddworld game? <laughs> it's been a while. Mm-hmm. This is a. Didn't you buy this, Izzy? Yeah, I never played it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a remake of the original Oddworld game. Uh, That's basically what it is. It's a remake of the, the first one on, on PlayStation. Uh, Abe's Odyssey, I want to say. Yep. Uh, and this one's just like a HD version of that. Yeah, And it was like the same guy who came back and did it, too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, the, the same uh, original, I think, team behind the original game. So. Mm, that's always good. All right, so uh, that is the games of March, the ones we know about. I'm sure at some point even more will get release dates in the month. But Of course. <laughs> but not any big AAA games. <laughs> Thank God. <sighs> Unless... Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Sony somehow comes out and announces The Last Guardian for, like, the 31st. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's out tomorrow. <laughs> oh. It pops out with a fucking brand new Star Fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is coming this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if they did that, I think they are, we'll just end. <laughs> mm. That'd be awesome. Yes, yes, it would. All right, so with that done, it's time to move on to our news stories. And our first one here can go to James, since he's the only uh, one with an Xbox. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all own Xboxes, but you're the only one who plays one currently. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! The link is... Hold on, let me try this again. <laughs> yeah, it happened to me too. <laughs> it says, well, 404, the link is missing. Oh, shit. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, bum, 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 bum. It shouldn't be that far now. Just, just uh, read the title. <laughs> okay, so apparently the rumored games for February. Confirmed. Well, I don't know the link's down. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I got it. Wait, wouldn't this be for March? This is for uh, March, yes. Yeah, yeah, because, so, yeah, you screwed up. <laughs> so, free games, Xbox Gold for March, Tomb Raider, Rayman Legends, and Bioshock Infinite. I have two of those three games. Or... <laughs> <laughs> They're all uh, pretty good games, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, except for Bioshock. I, I, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I, I never really played the other ones, so... 
Oh, yeah. Rayman and Legends is definitely the one that everybody should play. I'm, I'm sure that's the one that a lot of people miss. Mm-hmm. Fantastic platformer. Indeed. Okay, so here we go. Rayman Legends and Xbox One headline headlines the <laughs> words. <laughs> Rayman Legends for Xbox One headlines the list for Xbox Live ge- free games with gold offerings for March. Joined by Tomb Raider and Bioshock Infinite. What's more, in April, Microsoft will offer four free games on 360 and two on Xbox One. <laughs> Trying so, to catch up to Sony. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's what it is. And for those who, who care, Rayman Legends is going to be 3.4 gigabytes. Tomb Raider will be 6.57. Now, is that the latest Tomb Raider game? Yeah. And Bioshock Infinite will be going for is 6.4 gigabytes. And looking at the prices here, Rayman Legends is still $39.99. Mm-hmm. Which I think that should be Lower, but hey, what do I know? Tomb Raider, twenty bucks. Bioshock Infinite, thirty bucks. So some yeah, games, some yeah. really games. Yeah, it's a pretty good month for anybody with a gold subscription. Yee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy my free games every month. <laughs> like this past month, I was able to get a uh, Sniper Elite. The first one. Oh, nice. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I never thought shooting a Nazi with a sniper rifle would be so fulfilling. <laughs> that, that's kind of why I'm, like, excited for the uh, Zombie Army trilogy releasing uh, next month. Because it is from the same guys who did those games. Oh, wow. So a lot of bullet time and x-ray shots. Mm, and killing a zombie Hitler. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zombie Hitler. <laughs> it be nine brains! <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so I guess we can move on to our next yeah. news story. Which, uh, is here. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Give me a second. I need to do something. If you want, take the right. story. I'll be right back. Yep, we will do. Alright, so, we all love collector's <laughs> editions. Special editions are awesome. They can come with some really cool shit. Well, the guys behind Dying Light, they got a very special edition coming to the people in Europe. And it only costs 250,000 pounds. Roughly 387,000 US dollars. And this is the zombie action thriller Dying Light. Came out three weeks ago in North America, but is only now arriving in the UK due for release on Friday. Physical edition, it's been out digitally, I do believe. Yep. So, the uh, My Apocalypse Edition comes with the following items. A custom-built Dying Light zombie home by Tiger Log Cabins. Zombie Avoidance Parkour Listens with Ampisound, the team behind the Internet Smash Dying Light Parkour POV video. Be the zombie... Sounds dirty. (laughs) <laughs> be the zombie match with devs where you where you win so you can brag to your friends how leet you are trip to Techland <laughs> in Rowclaw who the fuck is leet anymore <laughs> trip to Techland in Rowclaw <laughs> to meet the dev team and party with the party with Steve the zombie <laughs> consultant I, I'm just going to title this video, Who Says Leet Anymore? <laughs> your face skinned onto your Night Hunter character model. Dying cool. Light branded vision goggles, plus adult diapers for the night portions of the game. Time Store wow. side steel box editions of Dying Light. So four copies of the game, which, you know, in a $387,000 collector's edition, you'd hope for more than just one copy. Yeah. <laughs> Two top-of-the-line Razer Tiamat headphones. Ooh. And a human-sized volunteer figurine to use as a deterrent on human writers. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is ridiculous. And you know someone bought it already. Probably. 
<laughs> How many did they make of these? Is just, it just one? one? Just one. Wow. Dying light. And it's being offered only through game in the UK. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is just nuts. <laughs> yeah, that is one hell of a collector's edition. The thing that you actually get your own house out of it. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm just speechless. I, I really don't know what to say, because it's, it's just that ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Jester has considered it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he even knows about this. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of cool, but, you know, for how much was it in the U.S.? Like 387000 uh, yeah. thousand. You could buy a fucking house for that. A good house with proper... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another thing. Okay, say, say you spend all your money and you get this. <laughs> Where are you going to put your custom-built uh, zombie filter? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do they just, like, give you a portion of your money back if you, like, live in an apartment? <laughs> or, or if you live in the middle of the city? <laughs> uh. But then again, realistically, you could probably d triple your money back if you just put the uh, life-size fucking zombie figurine on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's um, that's one hell of a statue to have. Oh, that's how you feel if you forget you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Come around the corner. <laughs> Good thing I'm wearing Private the adult things. diapers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking poor core lessons. Really? I mean, how many gamers do you know would actually be interested in parkour? Parkour. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a lazy fuck. I have a hard time walking up and down the stairs in my apartment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'll put that part on eBay. <laughs> I mean, this is cool, but this is ridiculous at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a way, though, it is kind of cool that they're actually doing something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. All right, well, let's uh, keep moving. Izzy, you've got our next story, which is actually really quite interesting. Yeah, it is uh, Lionsgate, which is, of course, the uh, film company, uh, has invested a significant amount. They haven't disclosed what it is. In uh, some sort of a partnership with uh, Telltale Games, specifically, they want to create some sort of show that's going to be very interactive. And, of course, Telltale, now known for all their licensed games, The Walking Dead, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, Game of Thrones, etc. And uh, this definitely sounds interesting. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out <laughs> mm -hmm. and if it's actually going to be successful because nobody has really tried something like this before hmm. so we'll see um at this point telltale has been a, a little bit overexposed in my opinion mm -hmm. it seems like they're all over the place of course they got yeah. really popular once they did the walking dead season one and then we got season two we got we got the wolf among us season one and we got Borderlands, t um, Tales from the Borderlands, and we got Game of Thrones. We're getting some other franchises later on in the year. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know how I feel of the, the state of Telltale right now. Uh, Walking Dead Season 1 was a really special, special like event in gaming. Mm -hmm. And now that they're just doing all these different franchises, it's kind of lost its luster for me. And I, I've had Game of Thrones episode two sitting on my hard drive for the longest mm -hmm. i just haven't really had the motivation to play it mm -hmm. yeah and it's along the same notes as he was saying lines that he was saying that it, their production value would seem to have taken a bit of a you know bit of a shot to the head too because mm -hmm. i was yeah they, they haven't improved that engine at all like no. it's still like you know every now and then it kind of chugs 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was watching uh, Lord X's uh, playthrough of Game of Thrones, <laughs> and there were times the background was just, it looked awful. There was fuzzy. screen entering, it was fuzzy, jagged, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it just snapped into place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was pretty good compared to, like, the first part of Episode 2 oh, that wow. I streamed, because at one point, one of the characters is in the back of a wagon. They've thought him to be dead, but he's waking up with, like, dead bodies around him. Only thing was, every body, including the guy driving the wagon, completely black. Like, <laughs> just black <laughs> shadows. That, that's all it was. Oh, man. Oh, you in the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. <laughs> you in the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. This ain't no Game of Thrones. That's I'm sorry. There's something that, like that should have been, you know, bugged out and, you know, the play testing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they need to get that engine fixed. Definitely. Yeah. They, they need to, like... I don't know if at this point it's kind of the point of no return because they just have that in place and they've already gone through several seasons and they're, they're, you know, into the second episode of Game of Thrones, into the second episode of Tales of the, from the Borderlands. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I don't know what they could do at this point, which I don't know where that is, yeah. by the way. But. They've been waiting on that one. The first one was so good. We'll <laughs> see. It just, it, it just isn't like as special as it was anymore because mm. they have so many franchises going yeah. mm-hmm. at the same time so it's not like it gives you a chance to breathe mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean they're not doing a bad job because what i've seen <laughs> some of the uh, games i mean you know the story is still there the heart is still in the game it's just <sighs> you can you can only drive on a bald tire so long before it pops Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like you said, they're stretching themselves out too far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really hate to see a good company like Telltale go under because they just couldn't handle all the work. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> all right. So moving ahead, we have three little mini stories. Wait, oh, wait, one. no, right. I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, James, go ahead. Take the next story. It's your turn. All right. So, I'm sure as many of you know, the newest trailer for Batman Arkham Knight has landed, which means the game has finally have, has its rating. And it's rated M for mature. <laughs> because of violence, um, what is it, some profanity... And a few other, like, really minor things. Mm. Blood. That was the, yeah, blood. There's blood in the game. Mm -hmm. Gasp. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe Harley Quinn's skirt's a little bit shorter. (laughs) Dude, it gets shorter every game, and no one complains about that. (laughs) Seriously, you find one person complaining about that, and I'll fucking hit him in the head with something. (laughs) But, yeah, it's something that has been happening within, you know, as the game series continues. You notice more and more swearing, for example. Mm-hmm. Like, with Arkham City, the, the, it, the, there was one term they threw around a lot, and that was bitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it was almost every, every other line from the minions and, you know, backup <laughs> characters was like, oh, that bitch. <laughs> Well, I, I just saw something on that note. Maybe Batman drops down at some point and goes, I'm the Batman, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. I'm the Batman, motherfucker. <laughs> and, and, but it's got to be the Christian Bill. <laughs> 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 oh, but there's, there's one thing I have to ask. Um... Who? Now, I, I might be missing it in the notes, so cut me off if I'm going too far. What yep. our, what is our feelings about the game? Did the trailer hype things up, or...? Uh, for me, personally, it really did hype things up for me. Like, I was a bit down after the whole Ace Chemicals 
trilogy of trailers that they showed off, like the stuff of the Batmobile. As cool as it was, it was a little too much focus on that, I felt. But mm -hmm. this trailer just showing, like, more of the story and, like, how pretty much fucked Gotham is at this point really yeah. intrigues me. Is he? Yeah, I, I thought it was a good trailer, but I, I, I still want to see how the, the full game actually turns out to be. Because yeah. we, we have a good trailer, but we never know if the game will actually deliver until it actually releases and we see where they, they take the Batman mythos. Like, are they going to, you know, stick to to him, uh, you know, as, as close as a character can? Because if they have anything where, where Batman is shooting a gun, like, that's completely <laughs> against yeah. the character. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard, like, the rated M, I was wondering... Are they doing something directly with Batman, or is it, you know, as a result of the characters around him that they do something to him? Like, what? why are they getting it a rated M, you know? But at the same time, games like Halo are rated M, and, yeah. and they don't show much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just really, for like, the, the, the violence and, like, the alien blood or the, the human blood or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my concerns with the game is don't don't get me wrong i love the series the trailer looked good main concern number one batman using a gun even if it's on the yeah. mobile he's using a gun even though it's shot out of the beanbag he's still using a fucking gun mm -hmm. yeah number two how many new villains were there <laughs> the arkham knight that's that's it <laughs> yeah it was the same Which is probably guy. gonna be the Joker. <laughs> it was gonna be the guy the mask off and be like, ha ha, I wasn't dead. Guess what, bats? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, exactly. It was the same people we've been fighting in all the other games. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except for now the scarecrow has showed up. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay. Fuck Two Face was the fucking um was the training level boss? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at yeah, no. Arkham City. City. Yeah, Harley Quinn was you know Harley was a really bad DLC. <laughs> I never got around to playing that. Yeah. You're not missing much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> Penguin's back again. Mm -hmm. Poison Ivy, yeah, we actually get to do something with her this time, which is good. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the Arkham Knight. Yeah. Wait. Uh Firefly was in that trailer too, wasn't he? Oh yeah, Firefly. yeah, that's true. Yeah, he he, he was in Ar Arkham Origins. We don't yeah. talk about uh, Origins. <laughs> Firefly, in my mind, is not you know an A-list Batman villain. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, he he's B-list, you know, a high B-list just because you know of how ruthless and psychotic he is. But mm -hmm. he he's no match for Batman. He, no. He'll never be a match for Batman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, poison. You know, poison ivy's there, which is cool. We actually get to do something with her, but mm -hmm. and scarecrow. I will admit, you pointed it out when we were talking earlier. His little comment, the Batman, mm. and to, and I've already won. Yep. Most time you get villains going like, "Oh, I'm going to crush you." He's like, "Fuck it, I've already done it." <laughs> Drop the mic, walk away. Yeah. <laughs> But it's just, uh, uh, really, Scarecrow? <laughs> I don't know, I like him being, like, the main villain this time around, though. He, well, he does deserve it, because, you know, uh, Arkham Asylum, they kinda, he was a mini-boss. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and people talk about his levels more than they do the rest of the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was probably some of the most memorable stuff in the series, honestly. And Arkham uh, City, he was nothing more but, you know, an Easter egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it makes sense that he gets to stand out in the, in this game a bit. My concern with the Scarecrow is, what the fuck did they do to his face? <laughs> yeah, he looks like really, really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was that alternate ending in Arkham Asylum where, you know, he was down in the sewers and, yeah, what's his name, Killer Croc comes out and, like, grabs him down into the water. That's true, yeah. Yeah, okay, I forgot about that. But still, at the same time, getting mask filters surgically implanted into your face. Hmm. Unless Scarecrow is the Joker, like, 
<laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 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 waiting for Joker to be one of the damn characters. Like, we, no, 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 he's coming back. You can't kill the Joker. Yeah, Joker never dies. <laughs> so I, it's, well, yeah, well, I, I think it's strange. Like like you said that they haven't introduced other stuff. Even like stuff that's currently going on in the in the comics. Like I really was hoping they would like implement some of the Court of Owls like oh, stories into like if they had like you know that whole storyline going into this because mm-hmm. that would um, make more sense especially now that Gotham is in the shape it's in yeah yeah and that that would be perfect for this but maybe that's what they're actually doing and they're just you know like what they did when when they were promoting Arkham City and they're like oh the Joker dies blah 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 and then like it ends up you know the Joker. You know that that thing that they showed, yeah. and everybody was going crazy. Oh, they spoiled the game, and he didn't really die or whatever. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see. It's just yeah. I'm more eh on the fence than excited. Yeah. Another question: There was a rumor going around too all after the statue was kind of spoiled online for a brief moment. Do you think the M rating might because might be because Batman dies in the game? Hmm. I don't know. I I cause, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Cause, <laughs> cause, no, it's good, man. Um, because what I heard um when I was reading the whole quotes coming out of Rocksteady that the people at Warner Brothers like directly contacted them and they were like, "No, you can't do this," and they had a fight for it. Not really. They sent them a list of concerns and. They called them back and were like, they told them their vision or whatnot, and they were allowed to do it. That's the thing about the M rating. They didn't focus on, like, making, or didn't put rating into consideration when they were making the game. They just focused on their story and their vision, and when they Mm -hmm. got the rating, they didn't do anything to, like, tone it back down to a T rating. Yeah, I I just mean, like, I'm wondering what Warner Brothers saw that they... That you know, you know what I mean. What they saw, and they're like, "No, we don't really agree with this." But you know, they let them do it anyway. But they didn't agree with it, and them being, you know, the the owners of the Batman IP, mm-hmm. I'm just wondering what that is. Like you said, are they going to kill off Batman? Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe or they the, do. Oh, go ahead. Or the, sorry, or or does Batman actually flat out kill someone? Mm. Yeah. Uh, like I was just going to mention, maybe they go at the Dark Knight Returns kind of deal where, spoilers, he does kind of kill Joker <laughs> in that, and, well, he basically fakes his own death by the end of it. Mm-hmm. Possibly. But we're going to have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Greg Miller, uh, we're on Kind of Funny, had like a great little prediction for that where... Maybe you know he does fake his own death, credits roll, and after the credits we get old Bruce Wayne standing before a statue and he talks to Terry. <laughs> oh, Terry McGinnis. Yeah. I think I'd cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love a good Batman Beyond game. That would be pretty awesome if they did that. What I don't want to see is that other prediction that he made <laughs> about the Justice League game. I do not want to see that. I want him to keep Batman all in his own universe. But that's just me. Yeah, that is just you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to see Rocksteady do a Justice League game. A damn good Justice League game. Yeah. But before we move on, speaking of Rocksteady, uh, I want to give them, you know, mad respect for sticking to their guns and mm. not and not changing the game. It's like, no, this is our vision. We got an M rating. We'll stick with it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Kudos for them. No, I, I wish more places, you know, more companies did that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's, right. <laughs> it'd be, be better gaming, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's uh, move on to our next story. And that is, well, a bunch of little mini stories. We can each take one of these. Uh, on March 10th, GTA 5 is finally... Well, maybe, unless it gets the light again. Getting heist. Yeah, I'll believe that when that happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, Izzy? 
Yeah, the next one here is uh, Dragon Quest Heroes is going to be coming to North America and Europe, which was Ooh. originally just coming out in Japan, and it's a Dynasty Warriors game within the Dragon Quest universe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So excited for that game. Yes, finally you get to kill wave after wave after wave of happy little slimes. Mm-hmm. It has characters from Dragon Quest Eight. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> <laughs> like and it's anime, so there's going to be a lot of boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, speaking of a lot of boobs. Yes, Bethesda will be doing their own E3 press conference. Oh, this is going to be good. Mm, Fallout 4, perhaps? <laughs> we shall see, but... Ah. Well, those guys like it. Alright, don't, don't drop the ball, guys. They, they go on stage and it's just like, remake, remaster, remake. <laughs> <laughs> they knew what Square Enix did when they went on stage and they're like, this is an announcement <laughs> of an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> and here, Final Fantasy VII, but not the <laughs> HD remake you actually wanted. <laughs> oh, God, I, I, people would riot if they just walk out there. All right, you've been asking for it. New DLC for Fallout 3. <laughs> Morrowind HD. <laughs> Horse armor for Skyrim, finally. <laughs> like they were fucking not invincible enough as it is. <laughs> well, thinking about it now, Bethesda does, like, have a lot of franchises in play that they can promote for their own E3 press conference. They have Doom, they have Fallout. Oh, I was Fallout, just about to say that. Yeah, Doom. Yeah. Fallout, they have the Elder Scrolls. Um, Wolfenstein, The Evil Within. Eh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it, what if they just come out and like, yes, we're creating our own fighting game franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to use all the the all-stars. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we quit play that. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, the all Every time you do a show, Rukin, Fushoda, Fushoda, Fushoda. <laughs> all I can picture now is uh, the Wolfenstein character's name. Uh, B.A., what's his B.J. name? B.J. B.J. Blaskowitz. Yeah, him versus Alduin. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, that, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, if they do announce any remakes, I would love to see Skyrim come to the PS4 and actually work on a PlayStation platform this time around. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, with that, let's uh, move into our movie and TV news. And who has the first one here? Is he? Or is it me? It's you. Oh, yeah, it is me. All right, so, the <laughs> Ghostbusters reboot. It's coming. we got an all-female cast for it. And the director has come out and said that it's being influenced by The Walking Dead. What the fuck? Which, I, I didn't understand this quote at all. <laughs> I know the words, but in that order, they make no sense. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. Uh, here's the uh, quote. I will say I was very inspired by the show. Said uh, by the show, this show said Fig, according to Blastar. What I love is how they play with danger. They play with the scariness, but also the idea that it's always about Gauntlet Run, and that's something an element I want to bring to this Ghostbusters reboot is having to get through these various obstacles that are supernatural and all that. I really feed off The Walking Dead. So wow. it's being inspired by one of the most viciously emotional and terrifying shows on TV. This is stupid. It really is. This is not what Ghostbusters is about. Oh, no, Ghostbusters is the complete opposite. That's the thing, though. Like, the cast that they have is, like... <laughs> it's going to be, like, a gritty, gritty tale. <laughs> It'll be a gritty, gritty tale with extremely stupid comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that makes no sense. But seriously, what the fuck? 
Well, what's going to happen? They're going to be going up the up the fucking tower to fight Zool, and they get, get attacked by tentacle ghosts. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, seriously, what what is he thinking? This is a completely different tone. It just it really does not make any damn sense at all. Now, if they were going to say that for the Ghostbusters spinoff that they're doing, the old male cast, mm-hmm. then, yeah, that would make a bit more sense. But, you know, they're, they're, they have all these, you know, com- comedic female actors, and they're going to make it gritty mm. and emotionally draining. <sighs> I don't know. That, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of... Interesting. Anywho, we got some more Spider-Man news. Why don't you tell us all about it, James? Uh, do I have to? <laughs> I'm actually sick of this story. I've heard it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> the Spider-Man debate continues, ladies and gentlemen. Let me copy and paste this real quick. So, as everyone knows, with much joy in our hearts... Uh-oh. What the fuck? <laughs> I was trying, to, <laughs> trying to message, but I'll read that in a bit. But as, you know, much, with much joy in our hearts, you know, Sony finally has the rights to use Spider-Man mm-hmm. in their Avenger series, and they're going to be helping Sony with their fi- with the with the Spider-Man franchise as well. Mm-hmm. Now they're arguing who's going to be Spider-Man, and I don't mean the actor. I mean, could Miles Morales be Marvel's Spider-Man? Aunt May. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Miles Morales, the Spider-Man from Ultimate Spider-Man, who took the place of Peter Parker after he died because he had similar powers, is the current rumor of the storyline that you're going to be going with. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, there's so many rumors flying around about this. You know, at one point, I, I believe they were even playing with the fact that Gwen Stacy might be Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which was... I, I, I think I had a stroke when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> well, a new comic did come out this week called Spider-Gwen, so... <sighs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that, now don't get me wrong it's, I'm not being a purist here I'm just looking from a marketing standpoint mm-hmm. a reimagining of Spider-Man at this point would be a very bad idea yep stick with the Peter Parker don't give us another origin story just be like oh yeah I got my powers like this this and this and now I've been fighting evil mm-hmm. and oh Peter go yep I mean it would be Interesting to see Miles Morales later on, like, yeah. down the line, maybe, like, set him up in the Spider-Man universe in the solo movies, but, yeah, uh, as much as I like Miles Morales as a character, because he is a great character, we need Peter Parker to be done right. I mean, uh, Andrew Garfield came close, he was a fantastic Spider-Man, needed work on the Peter Parker route, but... Right. Yeah, we need a Peter Parker done by Marvel. Yeah. And um, I'm so I'm sorry that that's he he he's a character that stepped up to take the place of Spider Man. He's not Spider Man. Mm-hmm. So having him be the new folk, be the quote unquote new Spider Man without any real backstory is kind of dumb. For a lack of you know fancy words. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's just my view. That's how I see it. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yep. Okay, well. Let, let's move on to something really good. You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll, I'll take this story, oh, and that is uh, uh, Neil Blomkamp, of course, known for uh, District 9 and uh, 
the new movie Chappie, which is coming out pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, he had posted some images online a few weeks ago about some, some concept art about an alien movie he was working on. Mm-hmm. And the internet blew up. <laughs> And uh, now it's official. Fox is going to be making Neil Blomkamp's Alien movie, and it's actually going to star Sigourney Weaver, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to completely disregard Alien 3 and Alien (laughs) Resurrection, as they should. And (laughs) it's going to continue Ripley's story from there. And I'm shocked, to be honest. Because uh, the way we've seen those movies go from Alien to Aliens and then Alien 3, which I actually enjoy. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's I don't not think a it's bad as, movie. Yeah, I don't think it's as bad as people say. But Alien Resurrection just got awful. Um, then they did the Aliens vs. Predator movies, and those didn't turn out so well. Uh, yeah, it's just great to see Fox you know, bringing this franchise back, especially after Prometheus. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I'm just, I'm shocked that this is actually happening, that this is actually real, that this isn't, it, it's like the second thing this year, like we heard about the Spider-Man, you know, being included in the Disney films, and now we're hearing this, it's like Hollywood actually cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're realizing, hey, you know, if we give the people what they want, they will buy it. I know, it's, it, it's what a con- pretty crazy. <laughs> But yeah, what, what do you guys think about the, this news? I think it's great, personally. Oh, God, when I saw the concept art, I was like, why? Why can't this be a thing? And now this happened. I'm just, oh. <laughs> Sci-fi nerd making all over the place. <laughs> uh, small confession on my part here. I've never seen any of the Alien Don't movies. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am a, a massive fan of Neil Blomkamp, so I'm excited that he's actually going to get to get to do this. I and I respect and understand like the greatness behind Alien and Aliens. So, yeah, since he's doing this, I will probably watch the first two movies now to be prepared for this one because I will see this one just because of him doing it. Well, prepare to be blown away. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely phenomenal. two different movies, yeah. Mm. Like, if you compare the two, like, the original Alien versus Aliens, mm-hmm. they're uh, very different, but I think that's what makes it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were different, but they worked t- together, because yeah. storytelling, it was the natural evolution of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you did all this, so what can you do to top it? Let's do all of this. <laughs> yeah. And space marines and hot buffed out Latina chicks and, <laughs> and alien queens and loaders and raw. <laughs> it, 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 it's pretty fucking awesome. You'll you'll enjoy them. Trust me. Uh, duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to add that and Terminator to my list, really. <gasps> you <gasps> <laughs> Okay, I we've discussed this on the previous <laughs> podcast. Let's uh, keep we, moving. Before Lord X gets murdered. <laughs> Remember how long it took me to actually watch Firefly and Serenity, okay? <laughs> I'm behind the times. Oh man, Terminator. <sighs> Alright, oh, so man. let's move on to the next batch of news. And I'm pretty sure I will be putting a picture of this on the background of the podcast, so you'll know what we're actually talking about. And that is that Zack Snyder has revealed what Jason Momoa's Aquaman actually looks like. Well, I need to look at this. I haven't seen this. Oh, prepare to be pleasantly surprised. Mm, Somewhat, yes. Sea Drogo. (laughs) That is basically (laughs) Sea Drogo. Yep. (laughs) And I'm glad I went with my suggestion and just gave him highlights. <laughs> just want <blonde> highlights. <laughs> yeah. I, I do have a couple of, well, one main beef here with okay. the whole thing. And I brought this up, I believe, back in my Help Zack Snyder video I did like ages ago. <laughs> the man doesn't know how to use color. 
Yeah, he doesn't. Because the way things are going here, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the Flash wearing black and gray when it rolls when he <laughs> rolls around. And Green Lantern is go I don't know what fuck Green Lantern is going to look black, like. Black gray. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's black and gray. Zach's all black and gray. But that's the thing, like, at this point, the Justice League is basically going to be looking like Superman, Batman, kind of Batman, woman Batman, flying Batman with power. Because <laughs> everybody is, like, dark and gritty at this point. <laughs> oh, shit. But that, then again, it, you know, it's just a promo picture. Hmm. See Batman, yeah. yes. Yeah, it, it could just, it could be completely different mm -hmm. by the time the movie rolls around. Yeah. And but, granted, we can't see his pants. Maybe his pants do have some <laughs> shades of green there somewhere. I, I can tell you there's a lot right of the cross. disappointed about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I happen to have a female roommate. She heard about this, saw the picture, and she couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just like, okay, now, now imagine, imagine Jason Mo Mo Momoa. Momoa. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to say his name wrong because I'm pretty sure he can kick my ass. <laughs> Jason Momoa and Roman Reigns doing a movie. <laughs> <laughs> she, he just looked at me and was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mentioned it, it does kind of look like Roman Reigns there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if they did a movie together, they could be brothers easily. Mm. <laughs> but still, I I kind of like it. I was kind of concerned about how they were going to do the Aquaman look. Mm -hmm. You know, the tattoos and limited armor, it it works. Yeah. A lot better than orange fish scale suits. <laughs> nah. He, he needs to be wearing an orange shirt, bright green pants, and riding a pink seahorse. <laughs> the giant pink seahorse. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, but then again, we might have a scene of him just walking around and that's what he puts on. A bright orange shirt and green pants. <laughs> Casual attire, yeah. Casual, or, what is it, surface dweller attire. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you said, he does look pretty badass. Again, my concern is are they going a little too dark and gritty with everything? Like, I know they want to be different from Marvel, but Marvel works because they do have the dark stuff. Like, the Age of Ultron trailer is extremely dark. Yet, we all know there's going to be those humorous moments in there because of the past movies. This is the proving ground for DC right now, and do they really want to make... Watchmen 2.0, basically. <laughs> yeah. If, if Honestly, I can... If fucking uh, Batman x Superman Dawn of Justice, if it flops... Mm. They're in trouble. Yeah, that's going to hurt them big time, and I got people throwing shit outside my window. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot is riding on this. You know, it's but then again, it's kind of hard to tell what they're going to do with you know one black and white photo, one concept art, and one dark photo. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to make a snap judgment on that. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, it could be a Technicolor raincoat of awesomeness mm. when the movie finally rolls around. You know. Well, well it is Zack Snyder doing it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does have a lot to prove. The Aquaman image, yeah, it's good, I guess. Overall, overall, it's good. And probably the best way they can actually prove to everybody that Aquaman's a badass. Yeah, by getting a badass to play him. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to see a great Aquaman, Justice League, Throne of Atlantis, they did Aquaman fantastic in that movie. I'm going to disagree with you. Fuck you. Batman, <laughs> Batman Brave and the Bold. <laughs> All I can think Man, of... it's the best one. <laughs> I haven't seen much of that series, but I have seen the musical episode where he starts thinking, are you a man or a Superman? 
As cheap as that series was, they did Aquaman great. He was this fucking bo- boisterous adventurer, and his catchphrase was outrageous. <laughs> so, that, in my opinion, best Aquaman. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Izzy, you have our final news story. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, a, a new <laughs> DuckTales series is coming to Disney uh, XD in uh, 2017, so that, that's still a ways off, but uh, they're announcing it now. Of course, the DuckTales series from way back in the day, which I'm sure all of us had at some point in their childhood watched an episode or two or DuckTales. So uh, I think it's cool that they're, they're bringing this uh, series back. Hmm. And... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes because I, I have uh, recently rewatched some of the episodes from the original series and they don't hold up too well. I got to be honest, but uh, we'll we'll see how uh, they they bring the series back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I am so fucking excited for this. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I I was looking through Twitter at work on my phone and I nearly dropped my phone when I saw the news. No tales. Woo. Might solve a no. mystery or rewrite history. Rewrite history. <laughs> da, da, woo. It's still like one of the best theme songs mm. of all time. Yep. And James is thinking right now that we've both gone insane. Yeah, he uh, threw a BRB in the comment box. Did so. not see that. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so... be the history to do. Mm. so that that uh, we have to wait till 2017, but still, they're actually doing it, which is oh. Uh, which means at some point we could probably get a Darkwing Duck reboot. Oh, it, maybe so. Or better yet, Gargoyles. Oh, I'm with <laughs> you there. 100%. Yes. That would be awesome. That would. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that's going to round it out for our new series, and we're actually on pretty damn good time for the amount of stuff we had on this podcast. But of yeah. course, it's time to dive into our been playing, been watching, and you bet your ass we haven't been reading anything section. <laughs> What's reading? <laughs> what is reading? Da. <laughs> reading for Jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the reading. <laughs> Oh, I gotta throw in some Iron Sheik in there. Oh. Gotta love the Sheik. God, God bless that man. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, who wants to kick off their been playing section? Ah, uh, I'll do it because mine's the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Souls Two. <laughs> yeah, I'm still playing that. Or did you just get it recently? Uh, I, I recently got it for PC, and I've been actually doing a a Let's Play series of it YouTube channel, which I'll promote later. Mm-hmm. But that, and I've also been playing, like I mentioned earlier, Sniper Elite V2. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, for a really short, fun game, you know, a really short game, it's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And motorcycles, really. Fucking motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> when you least expect it. Motorcycle! Yeah, tell me about it. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Cool, cool. Uh-huh. Is he? Yeah, um, I'm going to kick it off with uh, two that I really didn't play much, but I, I did play. <laughs> the first one is Ollie Ollie. Woo! And uh, I said, fuck that game, because the learning curve is too hard. <laughs> I downloaded it, played the level, and deleted that shit immediately. I was like, I'm wow. out. Peace. Um, 
Yeah, which is unfortunate. I, I've heard it's, you know, a great game. It is. But <laughs> it, I, I just, honestly, I don't have the time to delve into that as deep as I should. Mm-hmm. That's what she said. But, uh, yeah, the, the next one here is the Jack and Daxter HD Collection. But it's on the Vita, so it was uh, disappointing. Oh. I do have it on PS3, which this actually made me want to play, play my PS3 version. <laughs> uh, the Vita version, uh, there's issues with the frame rate, uh, at least from what I played of Jack and Daxter 1. Um, some camera issues. Uh, doesn't run that well, honestly. Um, doesn't look that great, honestly, either on Vita. So that's disappointing, but those are two there that I didn't play much. So just getting those out of the way. So I'll kick it over. To you, Lord X. Oh. Uh, two that I really haven't been playing. Well, one I have been playing a little bit more of, but one that I started. Super Mario World on the Wii U Virtual Console. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the... Well, no. One of the first games I played, I think, was on the Commodore 64. But the first real console game, I guess, I ever played as a kid and. Yeah, I've been replaying through that again. It's just as good as it always was. Probably, well, it is my favorite 2D Mario. And the other game that I've been playing has been Rayman Legends on the PlayStation 4. I picked it up on the sale right. last week, and man, that game is fun. That is so much fun. Uh, I was a big fan of Origins. Played through it twice, on the once on the PS3 and then on Vita. And everything about Legends has really really improved the formula and oh it's just so good the musical levels are fantastic yeah that was really good yeah just everything level design loving it absolutely loving it and it's the next game on my to beat list right now so i'll probably be talking about that again on the next podcast (laughs) yeah that's that's a really good game definitely highly recommended if anybody missed that Right, I'll throw it back to you before I get to my last one. All right, so um, I'll go through the three that I have here left. Uh, first one being Majora's Mask 3D on the 3DS. Uh, I didn't play much of this one either. Honestly, just played like the intro sequences and got up to the first save point just to see how it looked running on the new 3DS and how well the, the C-Stick worked and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, the C-Stick works really good in this game, uh, unlike in Resident Evil Revelations, which I was having a rough time uh, the previous week playing through. But yeah, it, it looks great. The, the 3D looks really, really good. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's a great remaster so far. I haven't gotten too deep into it. I'll probably, you know, put it down and restart it sometime that we don't have all these damn games coming out, which is probably going to be never, never. Well, summer time. and Yeah, summer. But we'll, we'll have Batman in June, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, the, the next game I got here is a Wii U game, and that is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. I wasn't sure if I was going to pick this one up this month, but I ended up picking it up, and it's pretty damn fun. I've only gone through the first level, which is weird how they have it structured, because from what I've heard, there's 27, 28 levels, but each level has, like, four stages in it, so, like, three stages and then a boss battle. So it's it's kind of weird that they would call it, like, level one, because I was confused. I, I got through, like, four levels, and I'm like, okay, I'm four levels into the game. They're like, oh, no, you just be level one. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so <laughs> it threw me off, but um, it's really cool. Um, uses the gamepad, of course, because you have to use a stylus to draw all the little lines for Kirby to move around the world. And uh, I'm digging it. And then the last and final game that I'm playing, which was an impulse buy, this past week, and that is Dragon Ball Xenoverse on the PlayStation 4. And uh, it's actually pretty good so far. Um, I'm, I'm surprised. I haven't played a, a Dragon Ball Z game in a really long time. The last one I played was Burst Limit on Xbox 360. Um, and this one's pretty cool. I, I like what they're doing, the, the character creation that you could pick a class. You could be, you know, a Namekian, a human, a Saiyan, or a Majin. And then you get to customize, like, how your eyes look and your hairstyle and your voice. It, it's pretty cool. And then you go through levels and go through different time periods in the DVZ history and uh, fix some things that were messed up because the 
I haven't seen the, who the villains are yet, but basically the war, the the time you know goes goes to hell pretty well, pretty much. And then Trunks calls on you. He, he asks Shenron to bring him some sort of hero to help him fix the timeline, and um, that's where the story starts. I've only finished the prologue so far. So that was pretty much up to the part where, you know, the famous scene with Raditz, Piccolo, and Goku, that Goku's holding Raditz, and then Piccolo does a special beam cannon through, and it kills both of them. So that's it so far. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm surprised. I, I wouldn't say pick it up unless you're a diehard Dragon Ball Z fan. Mm-hmm. Or wait for a price drop, pretty much. Yeah. yeah okay. Cool, cool. I'll wait for the motorcycle to pass. Um, yeah. <laughs> and my window is shut, too. Wow. Um, yeah, the last game on my list is The Order, 1886, which I played, have beaten, and have gotten the Platinum Trophy. <laughs> really? Wow, that was fast. Yeah, well. <laughs> wow. Did you have to play through it twice? Uh, no, there's a chapter select, so I just used that and went oh, back. Okay. Got okay. the collectibles that I missed. Uh, the game, I loved it. I absolutely loved this game. Uh, a lot of the reviews out there have been extremely harsh on the game. Uh, of course, a lot of people have picked on the length, which the, those reviews themselves have said length is not an issue for the order. Uh, it was the perfect length. Uh, it told a nice, concise story. Any more would just be filler, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, graphically, the game is the absolute best-looking game I have ever played in my life. It is gorgeous, just how fantastic everything looks. Like, they they definitely put their effort into making that game look good. And just to think that it's one of like the early PlayStation 4 games <laughs> at this point... What we're going to see in, like, years to come is just going to blow our minds, I'm sure. Mm. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it was solid. Lots of walking around. Lots and lots of walking around. But, personally, I enjoy that kind of slow-paced gameplay. Kind of keeps you tense and wondering when something is going to happen. So, I enjoyed that. Gameplay, solid when it comes to shooting and everything. Yeah, like the story, the characters, I, I was sold. It's a r- incredible world that they actually developed here for this game. Just the whole Knights of the Round oh, yeah. table, like going through the centuries and being still in effect at this age was really cool. You, you only get hints on like the Grail being found and like the black water that they drink from it to prolong their age. Spoilers. Yeah, no, that's kind of already out there. Well, still. <laughs> okay, that... I, I got a few questions. Okay. If, if you wrapped up, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, so in terms of length, you say it's like what seven, eight to eight hours, something like that. If you're like me and you're like exploring every little corner, yeah, seven, yeah. eight hours. Okay, that's not bad. Length doesn't really bother me. That's what she said. But, uh... <laughs> Eyes! <laughs> uh, the other thing is uh, I heard uh, Aussie Legend compare it to, like, a Telltale game. Um, what do you think of that comparison? Yeah, I agree with that, because they do focus mainly on story. And there are... There's not as many quick time events as, like, people said that there was. There's a few oddly yeah. placed ones, <laughs> but yeah, I think like storytelling wise, it can be compared to Telltale quite a bit. Just you know, okay. bigger budget Telltale <laughs> with a good engine. How about um, how about like Beyond Two Souls, uh, Heavy Rain? Like, how would it compare to those games? Oh God, nothing like those. Okay. Yeah, because I've heard a lot of people compare it to those games. And, uh, I guess I know it was a lot more action oriented than those games. Yeah, I guess in sections like where you do see quite a few quick time events, that does happen. But overall, no, not that much. 
Okay, yeah. that's what good I, to hear. Yeah, what I've seen of it, it, it's not as complex as quick time events either. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, it's not. Okay. All right, so let's I, I don't mind that. Yeah, I, I, I just bought it today, so I, I got off tomorrow, so I plan to probably start it later tonight and mm-hmm. give it a go. Probably finish it by tomorrow. Okay. So let's uh, dive into the bin watching section, and uh, when do you guys go first? Because i got to be right back. Okay. Let's see. Been watching. I've been watching a lot of movies lately. Oh, someone just landed. <laughs> <laughs> like uh last movie I watched was actually a really crappy I can't tell you how crappy it was movie called Illegal Aliens <laughs> starring one Joni Lawler formerly known as China and Wait, what? the late great Anna Nicole Smith what the hell did wow. I just walk in on Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> movie I watched recently called Illegal Aliens. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> and it's just as wonderfully horrible as you think it is. Is it about, like, actually, like, immigrants? Or, or no, are we it, talking about, like, actual, like, extraterrestrials? Or, like, extraterrestrials. <laughs> it, it's a little, I gotta see this. It is a little shitty, no-budget, self-aware movie, and it's great. Like, at one point, and Nicole Smith's character is tied up, and she's like, who, the f- who do I have to fuck to get out of this movie? <laughs> and break the fourth wall, five people just pop in, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's oh. one of those movies. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's awful. It's not as bad as, say, The Room. <laughs> But it, it's it's something you can definitely watch with your friends and have a good time with. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Besides that, I recently rewatched Reanimator, one of my favorite movies. I haven't seen that. I've heard a lot of good things about that. It's good. I mean, it was made back in like eighty five, eighty four. Some of the special effects really don't hold up too well. Mm hmm. It, you can tell by watching it's definitely a product of that time because of the editing style they went through, a lot of jump, a lot of jump cuts, stuff like that. But still, a good movie. Was that a like a remake of an earlier film, or was it like its own original property? Um, it's a adaptation of a story by H.P. Lovecraft. Okay. And as far as I know, there's been one, two. Three sequels. Hmm. There's the Reanimator, Bride of Reanimator, and Return of Reanimator. They've been talking about a fourth one for like years now. One that involves, you know, the Reanimator guy saving the President of the United States, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But if you like gory horror films with not a lot of plot, you'll love it. Sweet. Okay. So that's pretty much all I've been watching. <laughs> all right. I uh, guess I'll go next. Uh, for me, I've been watching Twitch Plays Pokemon. They've been doing their one-year anniversary run. Uh, it's been two weeks. Damn, ago. it's really been a one, one year since that? That's crazy to think. Yeah. They've been going for two weeks now. Of course, they got rid of their starter. At one point, they had an Onyx and three Diglets in their party. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and currently, they've beaten the fifth badge. Uh, fifth gym, gotten the fifth badge. And their team is led by a level 82 Parasect, which they have dubbed the Le- Leech King. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's been a uh, interesting run. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Uh, of course, I've been watching the usual Arrow, Flash, and Agent Carter. Uh, Agent Carter actually ended this week. Fantastic season finale. Hopefully it's a season finale because this show deserves a second season. <laughs> um, yeah, and there was an, kind of an after credits thing because, you know, it's Marvel. Well, yeah. And the final thing that I've been watching is 
that I've watched was Kingsman, The Secret Service, the new Matthew Vaughn movie adapting a Mark Miller comic book, because <laughs> apparently he does them all. Uh, this movie was incredibly fun. <laughs> like, start to finish. I hadn't read the comic book that it's based on, but now I really want to, because just from start to finish, amazing time in the movie theater. And it had oh, Samuel L. Jackson playing the villain, so. I gotta check that out. Um, it, I, I like the trailer. I thought it looked like a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's it's fun. It really doesn't take itself seriously. <laughs> it, it does, but it doesn't at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the been watching stuff for me. Easy. Yeah, so um, not much for me. It's all been WWE related, but I'll keep that until we do the, the <laughs> other podcast. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's pretty much for, for me. I haven't watched any like TV shows. I haven't watched any movies, so it's pretty much it for me. All right, cool. So nobody's been reading anything, so I guess we can move on to our shameless self-promotion section. And who would like to go first? I guess I will since I actually have something to promote now. Yay! Uh, Yeah, on my channel, uh, House Rage YouTube, I am doing a Twisted Souls, Dark Souls 2 playthrough. Basically, there's a gimmick with this one, and that is I'm allowing people to pick out my armor, my weapons, my spells, and even my gender. <laughs> mm. And I will play through an entire chapter of the game, and hopefully some people <laughs> pick out good loadout, some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, go on, here, use the ladle. <laughs> have you put that one up yet yeah uh, yeah I, I need to catch up because i've i've been yeah, watching you do that so much, much. <laughs> and to make it even more interesting i've been using uh some mods and some retextures as, as well like for example one of the armor sets was very similar to predator armor and I was able to find a mod to make it flat out predator armor. Mm. Yeah, that was very nice. Yeah, I'm just glad I got it to work. <laughs> like, you know, I'm still relatively new to PC gaming, so getting mods to work and everything has just been a pain in the ass. <laughs> but yeah, I've been trying to put a episode up every day. Um, I'm getting ready to record a new epi- new chapter. Either fr- well, either tomorrow or the next day, which is Friday or Saturday. Okay. I might I might take a day off. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good thing. Space it out a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to take so much space that I stop doing it. Mm. You know. True. That is very true. I understand that completely. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, then I'll be going around leaving things unfinished. And I don't want that. You can be just like me. Hells no. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's that's what's going on in my channel. Cool, cool. Easy? Yeah, I'll be back pretty soon. I took this whole month off (laughs) pretty much. Uh, which is crazy because I started off the year really good. I did a bunch of videos in January, and this whole month I took it off. And that's because I was getting rid of a bunch of stuff in my collection, a bunch of games that either I didn't like or, uh, you know, I never realistically planned to play anyway. I got rid of over 70 games at this point. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, a bunch of figures and stuff. I've been selling a lot of stuff on eBay. I got rid of my Xbox One as I got, as I alluded to earlier. When we were talking about Ori and the Blind Forest, you have so been yeah, saved, um, my brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'll be back March first with my uh, PlayStation pickups, 
or Nintendo pickups. Haven't decided which one yet, but I'll be recording both tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Sweet. Um, as for myself, just the usual comic shop pickups. Um, I did an Order 1886 unboxing. Uh, I started doing a Let's Play series on Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, which the guy meant to record yesterday, or uh, Tuesday, sorry, for that episode, but whatever the reason the game crashes on me when I load it up now so haven't tried today though but uh, hopefully I can get back to recording some more of that I want to but the game's just not letting me right now and uh, other net the let's experience series have been going up Xeno clash went up last week and let's experience Papo and yo went up yesterday so gotta watch that. It was uh, quite an interesting one, I'll give it that. <laughs> and of course, I do have a Loot Crate unboxing that will be going up soon, or might be up by the time this video goes up, so I'm looking for that. And the usual pickups video should be going up relatively soon. Nice. Yeah, that does it for me. And checking Twitter again, we got no questions and comments, even though I did ask the people for questions and comments, so... Oh, <laughs> damn you. <laughs> oh, the bright side, I guess that does uh, wrap up our podcast here a little bit sooner than maybe it would have went on for. <laughs> uh, we're looking at about a good hour and a half. Yeah, C considering what we had to go through. Oh, but yeah. I, I think this was good. Very good. <laughs> Alright, so, with that in mind, James, it's been a while since you've been on, so why don't you do us the honors and take us away? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls of all ages, on behalf of myself, Lord X, and Izzy, I'd like to say thank you, one and all, for tuning in to this edition of the Canuck Podcast. So, tune in next time where you'll hear Lord X go... That's it. I'm out. Peace out. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.